Most planes are long metal tubes filled with really long cables. These cables carry data, radio signals and power. Well, what happens when one of these cables breaks, is mismatched and there's no visible signs of damage? How would you find a fault on an aircraft like this, an over 60 meter Concorde? Or the Comet 4? Or the York? Or even an X or even an ex-Royal Aircraft such as the BE 146. Well, today we're going to show you an incredibly accurate way to measure a break along a huge cable. And also, I'm in the Queen's chair. We are here at the Duxford Imperial War Museum and thanks to the Duxford Aviation Society we are able to perform a time domain reflector test on their very own ex-Royal airliner, the BAE-146. Now let's hear a bit about the BAE-146 from Dave. Okay, so the, the 146 was originally designed in the early 80s, but probably late 70s, early 80s. So they built 387, which uh, well, well outweighs any of the other airliners that we um, have ever built in this country. This particular aeroplane was built specifically for the Royal Air Force. It was fitted out as a VIP aeroplane and was named a Statesman. Um, and then it went into service with the Royal Flight and it, during its service um, up until um, 2022. It uh, carried but all members of the royal family, numerous dignitaries, prime ministers all over the world. So it's a very well-traveled aeroplane. They arrived January 22. It sat around for quite a while before we had all the, the, the spares arrived from, they had to come up from Australia in actual fact. The, the um, Timex engines and wheels and brakes and all the bits that we needed to keep her looking okay. Um, then we finally uh, brought her down here to a parked position now. Before we jump into time domain reflector test, what exactly is it and what does it show? A TDR is a test that uses the sharp pulse of energy down a conductor and measures the reflected energy from any anomalies throughout the cable. This can be used to detect breaks, shorts and changes in cable impedance, which is important when it comes to radio frequency antennas and high speed design. This process is scalable and incredibly versatile. More commonly, you'll see a TDR being used on a mobile phone and PCBs within the mobile phone to test the high frequency traces. You can use this to test for disconnections in high frequency ethernet cables or even mains cables throughout your house. Or even to test the integrity or moisture of set in concrete like this very taxiway. But can you not do the same test with a multimeter? Imagine doing a continuity test down a 62 meter aircraft where you would need to probe at both ends. Impossible. Doing a TDR test is single-ended, meaning you only need to test from one end of the conductor. Also, a TDR test will tell you exactly how far down the conductor a break may be, along with any impedance changes throughout the length of the cable. So let's rewind back to the year 1988. The 146 has done its pre-flight checks to take the Queen and Prince Philip to the Netherlands to see Queen Beatrix. But we're having a communication issue. In this made up scenario, one of the pre-flight checks has come up with a fault between the radio and a VHF antenna. So let's see if we can figure out what it is. The fault seems to be an issue with a shielded cable somewhere across the entire length of the aircraft and it would be almost impossible to diagnose without removing panels and stripping out the system. This is where a TDR test comes in using our high speed USB sampling oscilloscope. Once it's interfaced into the aircraft coax cable, the Picascope sends a high speed pulse down the cable and records the pulse reflection. Today, Stuart is using the Picascope 9300 sampling oscilloscope. This instrument can send high speed pulses through the match splitter and using the Pico sample software, a user can read and measure the reflected signal. 
Depending on what the cable fault may be, it will be shown as a different shape reflection that can be categorized into one of the four steps. A straight line shows the exact same impedance all the way through the cable. A small step up or down shows a changing impedance. A step down to zero shows a short to ground somewhere along the line. And a step to infinite impedance means a break in the cable. Stuart is setting up the Picascope to measure the ultra high frequency antenna cable to test for one of these scenarios. Um, today, uh, my, me and my colleagues are, are looking at characterizing a VHF communication system, which in this example is on a BAE 146 aircraft. And what I'm doing is using the Pico Scope 9311 um, to characterize um, from the antenna feed at uh, the back of the transceiver mount, the back plane. And what we're going to do is measure the characteristic impedance um, from below the flight deck all the way to VHF COM1 blade antenna so I've now been in in the avionics bay connected our 9311 TDR capability which is both single-ended and differential in this example we're using a single-ended because we're characterized the antenna uh, and the antenna cable and the antenna feed um, and as you can see we're using our software Pico sample 3 with its TDR capability to ensure that our impedances are fully matched and the results are actually fairly fairly good showing that the the installation in this VHF Com um, system is it's very well matched to the antenna. So what we have here is our uh, Picoscope 9311, which purely does uh, distance to measurement um, results. So in other words, we can stimulate our device under test, or in this case, a uh, coax cable. Um, in the environment and look for its characteristic impedance. Now with a VNA we can do this but what we'd have to do is then take the frequency domain the S parameter data and, and do an inverse FFT to get us time domain data. Well as you can see from the screen you, you'll notice that the, the line there is pretty well flat and matched so going from the antenna feed um, all the way to the antenna you will see there's a slight drop of impedance of, of approximately 2 ohms showing that that you know going to its match load it's pretty on point so what we'd expect to see is a nice matched impedance line and we can clearly see we have that here so in this example what we're doing is we, we, we're getting reliability um, not only can we get an impedance measurement we can get a distance to um, measurement in other words we can look along the you know the, the cable and spot um, you know spot any in impurities or you know in differences in impedances to we in terms of spec to about four you know uh, four four millimeters and that's how you can test for impedance changes and cable breaks along cables hundreds of meters long remember you can use a TDR for a wide variety of testing applications from large cable runs like this aircraft or small PCB impedance changes in a single-ended material testing. Let's hear what the importance of aircraft wiring is from the Duxford Aviation Society's engineer, Dave. David. Well, uh, uh, quite obviously no different to in your house. If you switch something on, you want it to work. Don't you? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, historically, some of the aircraft that even sat out there on the, on the flight line, right as we said, the only electrics that would have been on it was the is the ignition system. They wouldn't have had anything else. That would have been it. If they want to communicate with the ground, they'd wave or flash a flash a torch. You know, that was that was it. But as we've come up through the through the years, um, radios and managed to get a radio in an aeroplane, so we need to generators on the engines and batteries and blah 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 you know it just goes on and on so you've got to connect it all together so the wiring is there um, mm. and it moves on I mean through historically obviously 
the electronics get smaller, you can get more and more in, so that you get more and more wiring, and mm -hmm. then we went into the um, Arink, Arink 429, I think Boeing 757 was the one of the first aeroplanes to use Arink 429 system, where you're using one cable to do more than one job. Mm -hmm. um, it's all new, and then we're, in, we're into fly-by-light now, where you, it's not it's optical cables rather than rather than uh, electrical cables. So historically we've come down and now we're at the point with the 787. Um, that aeroplane sits on the, ramp, on the ramp and if something goes wrong, mm -hmm. I mean it, it actually sends you a message in the crew room to say there's something wrong with me, come out and fix me. Mm -hmm. it's, it, they're, they're insane aeroplanes, they're just, yeah. it, the, the technology's gone so far now it's and a lot of automation yeah. as well. And so um, from an engineer's point of view, obviously back not that long ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, uh, you have to forget 50 years isn't that far away, 60 years ago um, it would have been a guy with a battery and a lamp and it, yeah, the, oh no, lost continuity there and have to go and find the brake. Yeah. Um, then the, an aeroplane of this age, the 146, would have had a lot of built-in test equipment mm -hmm. so you'd go to the box press the button and it would tell you whether there was a, wire, a break in the wire or something in the box was broken by a series of lights or whatever a um, bit further along the a320 they've got the, the screens on here which you can use and interrogate every box on the aeroplane mm -hmm. just go into the menus and look at them so you haven't even got to go out the flight deck i was saying to the 787 where you don't even have to do that the aeroplane tells you Send you a text message, so it's it's moved along a hell of a lot. And but conversely, the seven eight seven is a virtually all electric aeroplane. Mm -hmm. Apart from some very small parts, they've taken all the hydraulics out of it as well. So it's all motors. Yeah, it's mo well, not motors, but yeah, motors. Even the brakes are electric; they're not hydraulic. You know, it's just. But then they've got these massive generators on the engines as well. So, yeah. yeah. On an air show days we, we, and um, other days during the year, she's open to the public. Um, we make a small fee, charge a small fee for you to walk through it with a guided tour, a guy, well versed guide who will give you all the little stories about where the Queen sat and show you all the different parts sit through the through the aeroplane. So Dutchville Aviation Society was formed in 1975. Um, a bunch of aviation enthusiasts that were, I'm going to say we, because I was involved. We were coming to the airfield and basically looking after the aircraft that the Imperial War Museum had stored here. It was just a store, it wasn't a museum as such. Um, and we had several aircraft and basically just put them together and kept them clean and looked after them. And the, the, the society since then has grown and grown and grown. We've, have, through donations, got this wonderful collection of airliners. It's uh, operated as the British Airliner Collection. The society's grown. We've got only in excess of 2,000 members now, I believe. Um, it's all volunteers. Any money we make um, from air shows and whatever, it all just goes straight back in and we just use it. So we're currently we're painting the VC-10, which you can imagine is it's a lot of paint. <laughs> it's a lot of paint. And uh, I think we've got uh, members who, everything from um, retired engineers, um, some are aircraft engineers, many are not, mm -hmm. doctors, teachers, it's all sort of, they're just enthusiasts. Yeah. Come, put a pair of overalls on, mm -hmm. clean, polish, cut bits of metal up, whatever they need to be done, and everybody has good fun, basically. Mm -hmm. this thing. We work in complete partnership with Imperial War Museum. Um, always have done, and it's uh, we take a big part in running the air shows. We, we, we always supply staff for the flight line and manning um, the security gates on the flight line and things like that. So. Yeah.
If you're interested in the PicoScope 9000 series used today in this video, we provide demos and technical support from the link in the description. Thank you again to the Duxford Aviation Society for letting us perform a TDR test on here. And remember, if you want to see any of these aircraft, they're at the Duxford Imperial War Museum. And grab your tickets in the description below.